Hello, and welcome to the New York Baltic Film Festival and this year's virtual edition. It is a pleasure to welcome viewers from all over the US as we adapt to this new format. Established in 2018, the New York Baltic Film Festival is presented by Scandinavia House and organized by the Consulate General of Estonia, Consulate General of Lithuania, and the Consulate of Latvia in New York. Financial support for the festival comes from the Estonian Film Institute, the National Film Center of Latvia, and the Lithuanian Film Center with additional sponsorship by the Lithuanian Cultural Institute, the American Latvian Association, and LV100, and the Embassy of Latvia in the US. Today, we are speaking with the Lithuanian director of the lawyer, Roman Zaborowskis, uh, and our Anne-Maria Silk. She'll be moderating the discussion today. The festival is divided into three sections, and the lawyer is screening in the third and final section called Looking Inward and Forward, the Baltic Showcases, which are screening from November 12th and through November 15th. Now, please welcome everyone to the screen. Hello. Hi, um, I'm Maria. I'm the head of uh, publicity and promotion for uh, the New York Baltic Film Festival. And I'm so glad to have the lawyer and Roma Zaborowskis um, at our festival this year. Um, so Roma, hi, how are you doing today? Hello, hi, I'm good, how are you doing? I'm great, I'm great. So how, where are you now? <laughs> well, um... <laughs> Um, the quarantine just started again in Lithuania and we're actually at this special getaway outside of the city. Um, so, I don't know, we're trying to, best, to make the best out of this, um, you know, strange time. And uh, yeah, I don't even know where I am. I'm in this cabin in the woods. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, yeah, definitely hoping that we can get the second wave under control. So full disclosure, I and Romans have been friends since we were about 14 years old back in Lithuania. Um, and I am familiar with Rama's career trajectory. So Ramas is one of the very few um, openly queer filmmakers in Lithuania and actually in the Baltics. Um, and his career has always been tied to his queer identity and actually queer political activism. So Romas, maybe you could um, contextualize your work um, and your career a little bit so we can kind of see where the lawyer came from. Thank you. Uh, well, in 2011, I debuted my short film, Porno Melodrama, and it was a gay, um, a gay story. I mean, and uh, I decided to come out because I thought it would be an honest thing to do. Mm, because in a way, I also benefit from working with LGBT teams and I want to be direct and honest in saying that's who I am and that's also inspired by my own life. And when I came out in Lithuania, I became this overnight media celebrity, like gay celebrity, because there were so few out people back then. And now the situation have changed and uh, I contributed to that change with my own films. I made uh, three of them. The Lawyer is my third feature film. And I also contributed with many social initiatives like LGBT friendly Vilnius map and, and just speaking in the media and also publishing a book called Lithuania Comes Out 99 LGBT Stories, which is kind of self-explanatory. And now there are so many more out people and we just got one openly gay parliament member elected. So that's great news too. So now I'm not that special for being gay, but um, I hope still to find a way to connect with the audiences with, the, with my work. That's, that's amazing. And you know, as, as far as I know your um, creative journey, your films have always had so much of your of yourself in it, so much of your queer identity, and you were never really afraid to explore, you know, these themes. Um, also with our contradictions, you know, as, as we all have like so many contradictions within our identities. So maybe you can speak a little bit of your, of how much of yourself you put in the lawyer, what, what 
inspired certain storylines. Um, yeah. Well, thank you. I mean, one point of inspiration or beginning of the story was my own personal loss because four years ago I lost my father um, due to heart attack. He just died without any notice and uh, and that uh, kind of yeah it inspired me to rethink of my values and my life and um, that that was one way to cope with it and uh, in the other hand my my point of view and kind of starting point is my privilege because despite being gay in a homophobic country i still um, had a family an accepting family and friends and I'm, I am my own boss, you know, as a producer and director, and I don't face discrimination every day. And so it was interesting for me to, to kind of, to discuss that, the theme of privilege within this world that I know. And, uh, and then bit by bit, I pieced this story of, uh, yeah, of a privileged gay lawyer from Lithuania who, whose father dies and surviving that loss, he unexpectedly finds a connection with a Syrian refugee and online. And then, you know, their, their connection develops between Vilnius and Belgrade, Serbia. And uh, so, so that's, that's kind of, that's the story and that's the inspiration. And then as I went along, I did a lot of research and I got inspired by that research as well. That's so interesting, yes, because this is my own personal interpretation, but to me, the central character of the lawyer seems so much as a father figure, so he loses his father, um, and yet that loss pushes him to become, in a way, a father figure trying to help, you know, the refugee, um, the, you know, like his romantic interest. Um, stuck in Belgrade and it's very interesting how um, privilege plays into it because in the film I think you're kind of trying to play with these themes of like paternalism and but the refugees are never patronized so maybe you could um, elaborate on the research that you did um, to kind of not look in a way, not look um, at the refugee crisis or refugees themselves just from the point of view of a European in Lithuania. Yeah, well, thank you. I mean, I think that that was also one of the motivations to do this film is that in the media, we hear a lot of, um, of stories of refugees and a lot about refugee crisis. Mm, and, and in particular Syrian refugee crisis and Syrian war, which is unfortunately still going on. But uh, we hear the stories that are often the most tragic ones. And I understand why, of course they are important, but sometimes as readers, we can become numb because I don't know, the refugees are portrayed as victims or as heroes, but we, but we are humans and you know humans have flaws and humans have uh, humans are more human and and so i think that sometimes we need to see that humanity you know with the flaws with the um, with the whole with with many different circumstances and not just the one the most tragic ones and that's how i tried to approach the film to show a story where the two characters are not are not extreme representations of of the, of the identities that kind of first come to our minds sometimes, like as stereotypes. And, um, but uh, it's very interesting what you say about the father figure. I, I didn't necessarily thought about it that way, about uh, the lawyer character. Um, but I think, I think it's true. I think, I think what I, I, I did think about uh, his relationship with his father and his mother, and I do think that there was a lot of unresolved issues that impacted his cynicism perhaps his cynical outlook on life and and then once his father died he like it kind of symbolizes that 
um, the end of, of that period of life and and psychologically it gives him part to to kind of reevaluate those things and and i think i mean yeah so so i don't know if that answers your question but and for me it was also very important to show that uh, that connection because i feel like I wouldn't, I mean, it's so we present our film as a love story oftentimes, but I think the word that really is more suitable is connection. Mm. And I think that's what we really need in today's world. Oh, I don't know, maybe that's very naive, but I think we do need that because, you know, we need to connect with, with each other and with different people and, and kind of, that that gives me you know hope and and kind of that can help understand the society better and to make it better and because I, yeah so because i think that we can really help uh, to solve the syrian refugee crisis or any refugee crisis by first understanding that there is no them and us there is just people and some people are in difficult circumstances and you know it doesn't mean they're ideal it doesn't mean they have these uh, values or, or other values, it just means they, they need to uh, help because of those particular circumstances. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that, that was really an interesting take on that. So I actually have another question. Since, you know, this film is the first Lithuanian um, male, you know, like male gay love story, and you're one of the very few filmmakers creating queer films, you know, like, as again, not only in Lithuania, but in the Baltic region. Um, so I think a lot of people would expect kind of um, very positive rep representation of gay life and gay relationships. And I feel because uh, you're kind of exploring these themes, you're not showing, you know, like you're not showing perfect characters. So I think sometimes the reception to your films it's kind of like with a raised eyebrow, like what are you trying to say? Because, you know, it's kind of like a more complex theme that you're exploring. You're not just showing a gay relationship. You're, you're basically putting a lot of very difficult issues in one film. So how has the reception been? Maybe you can speak a little bit about that. And also your film's journey this year in festivals and critical journey. I feel like you know so this is kind of one one shade of the reception that the that my films get and but I don't I don't think it's the most popular one but it's definitely an interesting reaction and you know there is a lot of talk about LGBT representation in cinema and how it should be and you know should there be a happy ending all the time should the characters be ideal and and this is a very complicated and complex discussion and it goes back to new queer cinema and uh, you know, a lot of films that pioneered uh, queer teams in their countries, like Patrice Chéreau in France or Fassbinder in Germany or in America, you know, the whole new queer cinema movement like Todd Haynes and Greg Araki and, um, and uh, Derek Jarman in UK, they weren't necessarily portraying LGBT characters in positive ways they were portraying very different diverse characters and they were showing stories related with AIDS and also um, oftentimes with crime and kind of they were showing outlaws and uh, and they were criticized for that by LGBT activists uh, that and, and and further on and even you know glad like in America like didn't necessarily recognize a lot of those nuclear cinema films and uh, and I feel like now we're having the same discussion kind of again in television because quality television you know kind of overtook the 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 narrative about LGBT representation anyway and and then kind of Ryan Murphy does this with his shows his shows also uh, LGBT characters that are oftentimes evil and, and um, provocative, be it politician or uh, st horror story or American horror story and the other shows. So, and I think what he says is, is the same. He says that, well, 
it's not necessarily only to show positive characters because LGBT people are diverse just as everyone else. And, and so I think it's a very ongoing discussion. So I think uh, I'm very glad if I can be a part of a small part of this discussion. And, you know, I try to balance these things. I definitely do think about what, what does it mean to have responsible uh, representation, you know, or how not to push some stereotypes. And, and I try to be careful with, with that uh, in my films. Mm, but I think as long as I show those people as humans and as particular characters and kind of having flaws because those people have flaws, not because they're gay, I think that that kind of makes it okay. And also because I'm gay, so, you know, at <laughs> least that, that's my, 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 uh, my safety uh, card, you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, but I don't think a lot of people think about that in Lithuania, for example. I think the film was accept is accepted very differently in different countries and contexts. And that's very interesting. And I'm very curious how it was accepted in, in Baltic Film Festival. And I'll wait for your feedback. You know, you can send me your thoughts. But uh, anyway, so uh, for example, in Lithuania, we really marketed the film as a love story for a wider audience highlighting the main lead, a Motus Koschauskas. And I think we, we did get that audience and people connected. And, uh, and then some people hesitated whether it's a love story or maybe it's not really love, mm, but not because of homophobia, but just because of those characters. Like they were questioning whether they were sincere. And of course, that's, that's a welcome question as well. And then abroad, I feel like I mean, it was released online in, in Poland and I saw some good Polish comments. I mean, it seems like it's four out of five with the, the evaluation on this website. And then, uh, I don't know, I saw like on Amazon where people watch the film, like there were some great comments. And I know there are these different audiences because there is like gay male audience there is like LGBT audience, there is Lithuanian audience or Baltic film lovers. Then there is maybe like art house lovers. And uh, these are all very different audiences. And I'm very curious to see how French will react because you know, French audience is always special. And, and um, so yeah, unfortunately now it was canceled. It was uh, due to, to close this uh, Cherie Cherie film festival, but it will be postponed. and. And so, so that will be very interesting. And uh, and to circle back on on the journey of the of the film, as you asked, yeah. So it was due to premiere at BFI Flair British Film Institute Festival in um, in March, and then that festival was cancelled. But we still went ahead and um, provided the film for the critics, and there were some great reviews, uh, even like a dozen or more great reviews, very insightful and positive. So I was super grateful and that kind of saved our premiere experience. And for everyone who doesn't know, Maria also uh, worked, on, worked on that as a, uh, as a publicist. So also, you also made great decisions on, on how, to, how to solve that very tricky situation as a lot of filmmakers are right now. And then, um, and yeah, and then uh, and then it, it started to travel festivals again uh, in autumn once they started to resume. So it screened at Molodist in Ukraine, at Skopje in Macedonia. It screened online in many festivals. Like a few weeks ago, I had a Q&A for a festival in Minsk, in Belarus. I was like, wow. wow. like. It's just amazing. I mean, I, I I'm so deeply honored, and of course, I support and you know I I'm I'm inspired like to say the least by their fight for freedom at the moment, and it's so inspiring that they still mm, you know work on on these uh, artistic events, and it's just amazing. And yeah, so I'm 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 just very blessed, I think, with how the how this film travels and. And, uh, and it got a lot of distribution deals, so it will be rolling out next year as well, I think. And you can continue our story and welcome to contribute and recommend it to other viewers as well. 
yeah, it, it was a pleasure to continuously work on the film because it's a great film. Um, to kind of close things off, um, I, I also wanted you to kind of tell the viewers a little bit about your work and the lead actor Imota's work with the Lithuanian Red Cross. Basically, you know, what you did with fundraising to help refugees in Lithuania and what Imotis did volunteering. Thank you. Well, I always knew that I would like to contribute to make things better in Lithuania, although the film is not focused on Lithuanian refugee situation, so to say. But uh, it became so that I was contacted by a lesbian refugee who faced homophobia in a refugee camp in Lithuania. And she she looked for help and, and then I connected with Red Cross and I was so happy that they welcomed this plea for help and they really helped out. At first they helped legally and then I helped to raise some money and to move her out of that camp so she could feel safe. And, and so that worked and I raised around 5,000 euros to help her, but also other most vulnerable LGBT and non-LGBT refugees in Lithuania. And so I'm very happy about that opportunity with Red Cross. And then Imutus simultaneously, I didn't even know about that actually, I just learned afterwards, he started to volunteer at the Red Cross. So he gave, he donated his time to go and meet with, uh, with a few, it was two, but I think now maybe even more, refugee families and he goes there and talks and yeah I think he's doing this for a, a year now I mean he he continues to do it and that's just amazing and not only that but he then he was asked to share that story and uh, and he shared that story and I know for a fact that he inspired some other volunteers like because I talked recently, I, I don't even know if I told you that, but I talked with Red Cross and they told me that after this TV show about his volunteering, there were some volunteers that uh, showed up to, so I'm just, it's just amazing. I'm so happy that we had this opportunity. And, and this year uh, our film screened in cinemas in Lithuania. And of course it was damaged by the whole pandemic situation. But uh, I was, I also always wanted to donate at least something after we screen in cinemas. So I donated up 1000 euros and I raised another 1000 euros again to help. This time it's a more specific cause to help refugees connect with their families that are left abroad. So that's another thing Red Cross does now. So I don't know, I'm, I just feel very grateful and in particular for Red Cross that they welcome that help. Because, you know, they could have said, like, who are these, this, who, who is this queer filmmaker, you know? <laughs> you know they're, like, they're, like, they're busy, you know. But yeah, so I'm very happy and I encourage everyone to seek out for opportunities to help out locally for, for these uh, questions. Yeah, I mean, definitely, you know, now with the pandemic, it's very sad that the refugee crisis is kind of, you know, forgotten. It feels that the new cycle is just so fast, you know, it was the elections and then the pandemic was forgotten. But, you know, it's like we know that the refugee crisis is ongoing. Um, very quickly, so like I know that you like to advocate that people help their like local communities more, but like if if uh, Baltic Film Festival viewers would like to contribute to um, refugees and LGBT refugees in Lithuania, are there any avenues right now? Um, well, they could donate for that cause, as I mentioned for for this Red Cross for the cause that they're raising money right now for, for these refugees to connect with their families abroad. And, you know, so it's not specifically LGBT, but at least you know that if, if it will be LGBT refugees, they will be for sure helped because Red Cross is very open-minded and well, you know, or just, just of, of course it's not open-minded, it's just normal, but, Unfortunately, I mean, yeah, I was thinking about that too, whether it would be, whether it would make sense to kind of raise money more continuously for LGBT refugees. But the problem is that Lithuania is a very, Lithuania is a very small country and, you know, 
there aren't always LGBT refugees at all. Like sometimes there are just none. So it would be kind of complicated. It's better to do it more broadly and to have it as included. But for example, the story with, with this lesbian refugee that I mentioned, um, she has now, uh, she was now accepted to study at university and she will finally receive her, uh, her permit to live her based on those studies, even though the, she, she, the status on, no, on homophobia, like uh, it's more complicated. It became a legal issue. And so, yeah, but I wanted to just say that, for example, that story, it's, it's already like, uh, you know, more than a year that uh, I'm in touch with Brad Cross and they were helping her and, so it's a very long process sometimes even with one person and luckily this has a very positive happy ending i, I would say and uh, i think if people want to contribute they should check out uh, red cross uh, in lithuania and in particular a campaign in ococ.lt website and if you want i can give you the link and you can share it as yeah. well with the viewer we yeah. will we'll share it with the viewers you know i always love how your creative process weaves with your activism and i think it's really inspirational and thank you so much for sharing the film with our viewers we are so glad that we can present such progressive films from you know like baltic countries to the u.s audiences that we can really show the diversity of baltic filmmaking Thank you so much, Romas, and stay safe. Have fun yeah. in your resort. Romas wanted to do this um, Q&A from an outside bathtub, but we have vetoed that. Um, okay. Okay. Thank okay. you, Romas, so much. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you for your great questions, and thank you for including me in this festival. Thank you, the festival team. And uh, thank you for the viewers. And um, I don't know, I'm just, I just, I just feel very blessed. And so, yeah, send me your feedback, you know, send me your thoughts and I'll try to make even better film in the future. <laughs> and stay safe and congratulations with the counting the votes. <laughs> yeah, so. Thank you. We have all won. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Romas. Thank you, Maria. That was a very inspiring conversation. Um, please do check out the other films screening in this session. Uh, every All the information can be found at uh, balticfilmfestival.org, uh, including the other Q&As with uh, the other directors as well. So um, uh, please do visit us again. Uh, we continue to hope to bring uh, new Baltic cinema uh, to the New York or virtual audience or New York audience when you go back to physical uh, screenings. So please do continue to follow us. Thank you and have a nice day. Bye.